Hey there, and welcome to our channel where we talk about everything tomorrow and a bit of all's off. Today we'll be talking about our channel, what we, what we will be doing and what we're going to be doing today. And then once we've finished this intro to our channel, we'll get into our first commander build and go over that. Yeah, so on this channel we aim to go over topics in the MTG community such as bans, unbans, new set announcements, releases and other stuff like that. We also want to do pre-con explanations and upgrades and deck techs. Now that that's out of the way, let's get on to the main topic of today's video. Yeah, so today we'll be doing a deck tech on Ramos Dragon Engine. So this deck, um, it wants to try and do uh, a little bit of everything by using cards that play into multiple different strategies. So from straight up looking at the card, Ramos looks like a card that can play into a counters build. It can yeah, grow quite big. Like, or even just a multicolor legends build, I guess. Yeah. It can generate a ton of mana if you play the deck effectively. Free progenitors. Yeah, that's <laughs> a great card in this deck, being able to cast that progenitors. Very, very and then yeah. it gets all the counters back on Ramos. Okay. I mean, that's what we want to do, right? We just want to play some cards that remove, like, just the basic commander deck, I guess. Just yeah. some support, card advantage, removal, ramp. Yeah, big stuff. Cards that can do a little bit of everything to really help play the deck well. Yeah, so we'll be using cards like SRAM for um, card advantage. Card advantage. Uh, just in case you were wondering, SRAM is a 1 and a white for 2-2 two -two whenever you cast an aura, equipment, or vehicle spell, draw a card. And because we're kind of playing a little bit into the Voltron aspect with Ramos, we are running quite a bit of equipment and a couple of auras and not many vehicles, but that means that with SRAM out, we can be drawing cards to keep Fleal in our hand. Yeah, no, we've got stuff like Parhelion 2. That's, that's our one vehicle of the deck, just yeah. because it's just it's a, three angels. Yeah, it's a massive threat in the late game that can just start swinging for a ton of damage and is really fun to play with. Yeah, um, we've got... And it's it's not a cheap deck, to say the least, but... Uh, yeah. If I, you're looking to do... Um, budget then this is not the deck to go with it's got um a lot of expensive stuff in it yeah running all the shocks to help uh smooth out the mana base better but um you can if you are playing this deck you can always switch out for some of the cheaper jewel yeah. kind of lands you know scry like game lands, life game the life scries life. aren't usually what you do in budget per se yeah i mean more like the the life gain lands maybe even the check lands no not yeah. the check lands well, I mean, we're I running guess the, the check scries, The scries are. The scries are. Yeah, it depends on how low you want the budget. A hundred and under, I reckon you could do like scries, but uh, yeah, if like you go further for like down, 50, fifty, just that already yeah. makes up twenty to thirty dollars of the deck. Yeah, and including the commander could not do well. Like, yeah. So we are running forty-two lands in this deck. Um, because we just want to make sure that we're drawing enough land so that Ramos, which is a six mana card, um, oh, I don't think we actually talked about Ramos. He's um, he's six colorless mana for a four four flying legendary artifact creature dragon. And whenever you cast a spell, you put a plus one plus one counter on Ramos Dragon Engine for each of that spell's colors, and then you can remove five plus one plus one counters from Ramos to add, to add one white. Oh, sorry, two, two white, white, two blue two black and two red and two green to your mana pool. And you can only activate that ability once per turn, but it means you can play massive threats and it's yeah. quite ridiculous. Yeah, no, we've got like, like doubling season in the deck. I um, mean, it, it, it's expensive, but it's worth it yeah. for the amount of counters that Ramos gets. Yeah, and then with something like Hydra's Growth, uh, which, which is, um, to, uh, it's in the new Theros Beyond Death set. Um, it's two and a green for an enchantment aura. Um, when it enters the battlefield, put a plus one plus one counter on enchanted creature. At the beginning of your upkeep, double the numbers of double the number of plus one plus one counters on the enchanted creature. So the this part of like the plus one plus one counters part of the deck kind of aims to have so many counters on Ramos that he's a massive threat, can deal tons of damage to your yeah, opponents. Twenty one commander damage. Twenty one commander yeah. damage to kill them. It's relatively easy in this deck and is able to uh, keep the counters on there even when you're using his ability so you can play other big threats to back him up if you need to. Yeah, um, we're running a bunch of tutors which admittedly isn't the best way to go budget. 
Um, but it does allow to uh, make sure we're getting the right card so that in the event that someone maybe plays uh, Colrath Knight, it's a card that says um, creatures with counters on them can't attack or block, and that's a bit of a downside for Ramos. So then, you know, you can tutor up cards to maybe switch and tutor up Rist, the Redeemed, um, and start going for uh, maybe tokens. And yeah. if you've got a doubling season on the field, Rist is just great because you create a bunch of tokens, then double those tokens, yeah. and then with the second ability, you double the doubles. Yeah, yeah, and then just... so that's pretty crazy. And then you you know you play it, you maybe tutor up your um, uh, skull clamp, and then you can use that to draw multiple cards. So that's really good. Um, yeah. So uh, in terms of card advantage, we've got uh, quite a few cards because we do want to be drawing through our deck, making sure we've got enough stuff to keep fueling what we're doing. Um, so like we mentioned earlier, we've got SRAM, we've got Soul Diviner, which, which is, admittedly isn't the best way to go, but it's still card advantage. I mean, yeah. you just remove counters from Mar Ramos, which is pretty easy to do in this deck. Um, get the counters on, that is. Yeah. Um, and it turns counters into cards. We're running Sword of Fire and Ice because it's great for, uh, for a Voltron strategy, protection from red and blue, two relatively common colours. Yeah. And it's able to draw your cards, and it just is it's great. Yeah. Card draw engine damage, yeah. blah blah blah. Yeah, it does. I mean, protection from red and blue, it just shuts down a lot of decks because most decks in Commander run blue. So even their creatures, they can't block. Then you're consistently getting that damage and the card draw in. Yeah. Um, and then other card advantage cards, we've got uh, Growth Spiral, which is actually a really nice card. Yeah, it's, it's a green and a blue for an instant uh, draw a card, you may put a land card from your hand onto the battlefield. So it kind of ramps you as well if you've got the lands in your hand to do it, and it's able to draw you cards as well, which is just a nice card generally. Yeah, no. Um, also, Niven is at Reborn. Um, it's a Warbog for a 6-6 six, six flyer. When it enters the battlefield, we can reveal the top 10 cards of your library. For each colour pair, choose a card that is exactly those colours from among it. Put the chosen cards into your hand and the rest on the bottom of your library in the random order. So we're running a decent amount of two colour cards, seeing as this is a five colour deck. Yeah. So we're able to draw through and really pick out some more cards to make sure that we're getting the right yeah, especially like stuff like Assassin's Trophy, Eldamari's Call. I don't know if I'm pronouncing that right, but um, anyway. Eldamari's Call. Eldamari's Call. Yeah. For Ramp, we've got uh, 12 cards. So. Anima, um, which is not really Ramp. It's kind of Ramp, but. It's able to reduce the cost of your creatures, which is nice, and itself can get quite big. And being able to have protection from white and black is always nice. Yeah. Plus, it's a Tamur card, so you can't complain about that. Yeah, Tamur is... Yeah. No one will probably get our channel name, but it doesn't really matter. It's for us to know. Um, so, yeah, Arcane Signet, just generally good value. Two for an artifact that taps for any uh, colour of mana in your commander's colour identity. It's basically a command town and an artifact. Bloom Tender, which is very good. It's admittedly very expensive as well, but uh, it's it's such a good card in a five color deck like this with lots of permanents that it's able to just tap for five mana. often all five yeah. colors of mana, which is just crazy. Um, explosive Vegetation, just grabbing two lands is great onto the battlefield. It is four mana, but it's just another way to yeah. be playing good cards. Uh, Faber Arrow Elder basically does the same thing as Bloom Tender for um, one more mana, which is one why it, yeah, which is why it's yeah the fifty dollars less. Yeah, the advantage of <laughs> Faber Arrow Elder is it has vigilance and um, oftentimes it can be a five five. Yeah, which, which is, is nice. which is nice. It you know it's able to um, block some block stuff. some stuff. It can attack and actually often vigilance. Yeah, it's so. got vigilance. It can attack and then still tap for mana. Um, and the bonus of it having white and green in its mana cost is it's able to, to tap, tap for two, two mana already. straight away. Yeah, which is really um, good. Far seek one and a green for a sorcery. Search your library for a plains, island, swamp, or mountain card. Then put it onto the battlefield tapped. Then shuffle your library. Yeah, this is all round great. It can grab non basic lands, which is really good in this, mm. these kinds of decks. So we're running the shocks for those tutor types of tutors. We've got some basics in as well. Um, yeah, which is always nice. It's yeah. just. Uh, reduces the pricing a bit yeah. instead of running stuff like actual jewel lands <laughs> yeah um you yeah, know we've 
We got Felwar go. Stone, two mana for tapping for one mana of any color that an opponent's lands could produce. Yeah, so if you're playing another five color opponent, that's probably the best one thing. of your better sources of mana. Yeah, but also just generally in a game in a game of four players, like often they'll you'll be able to you're find all five colors tap. of mana. Yeah. And it's just generally a great card. You'll always be able to get some kind of value out of it, even if it's just tapping for a color you don't actually need. It's still ramp. Yeah. Uh, Mindstone, two for an artifact that taps for colorless, and one tap to sack it to draw a card. So it can also draw you cards in the event that you just don't need it anymore yeah. and you just want to be getting more cards into your hand. Yeah, it's a little bit of card advantage. It's not much, but... It works. We're running Rampant Growth, which is... One of the green, search layer for basic, and put it on the back for attacked yeah, at just... sorcery speed. Yeah, it's a very simple card, but it's generally it good. It does a thing. Yeah. Uh, we got Secure Tribe Elder, which um, I personally think is better than Ramp of Growth because it's the same mana cost. It comes down as a 1-1 one, one, uh, Snake Shaman, so yeah, not really great creature types, but generally good. I mean, good. Snake Tribal, is that out there? Yeah, yeah, probably. I've seen a couple of decks. Anyway, it kind of you can sit it on the battlefield and you know leave it as it goes around the turn rotation, unlike Ramp of Growth, which you have to play on your turn. Yeah, it's like an evolving world, except. Yeah, you Nothing can just evolving wilds. Yeah, it, it ramps you. It's it, yeah, and you can maybe block a couple of things. If you do block it, you just sacrifice it at instant speed, which is really nice, and you get the land, and you don't take damage. Which, you know, okay. Nice. Smothering ties, a great card in any deck. It's... Well, any deck running white, but yeah, yeah, most, a lot of decks run white. Yeah, it's just a support co support color. I mean, yeah, I mean, unfortunately, white is not necessarily the best color in Magic, but we're not going to turn this uh, segment into a rant about how white should be buffed. We'll save that for a later date. Yeah. Um, yeah. So it's three and a white for an enchantment. Whenever an opponent draws a card, you um, that player may pay two. If the player doesn't, you create a colorless treasure artifact token with tap sack this artifact had one mana of any color. So it's it's decent rap. And then we got the. Uh, what I would say is the staple card of the format with Soul, Soul Ring. Ring. <laughs> One mana for tapping for two colorless is. Yeah, it's, yeah. it's great. <laughs> it's amazing, yeah, but yeah. There's a reason it's restricted in literally every format. And yeah, well, banned, banned in every banned format. Banned in every format, ours. restricted in vintage, and it's, yeah, it's allowed it's, in Commander, so. Yeah, we're we'll not use it. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Although, I have seen some people who say that it should be banned. Yeah. I, I don't think it should because it's nah. such a staple card. Yeah, no. Maybe it's like been printed in so many like commander, commander for like precons, and yeah. it just doesn't feel like it shouldn't be there. Yeah. Um, okay, removal. We're running seven removal cards. We've got Anguish on Making. It's one, a white, and a black for an instant. Um, it says exile target non land permanent. You lose three life. So yeah, it's this just, is good. Yeah. It's, it's commander. No one cares about losing life. Yeah. Like. In the end, it's just being able to hit almost any permanent type. I mean, most of the time hitting lands, everyone's just going to get annoyed at you, so yeah. it's not that bad anyway. And the fact that it exiles just gets around so many things. It's really, really good. Yeah, Assassin's Trophy, black and a green, instant destroy target permanent, and opponent controls. So um, that comes in. Yeah, blah, blah, blah. It's controller may search that over for a basic and put it onto the battlefield. So basically, it stops you from destroying your stuff to ramp. Yeah, which I think it's fair. Otherwise, it would become an extremely powerful. Like it is already. It is already powerful. running yeah. vintage legacy stuff. Yeah, like it's already a really good card. But I think being able to ramp you as well would be would kind of push it over the edge and make it too powerful. Yeah, banned in all yeah. that stuff. So then we got uh, Beast Within, another card that can hit all permanent types. Two and a green, destroy target permanent. Its controller creates a three-three Beast token. So you know, it's um, it's good. It turns permanents into three threes. Yeah, and you can hit their lands in the event that you really need to. Yeah, I, I personally, I personally do that quite a lot. I, I yeah, but that's why I always get killed at the table. So yeah, don't hit lands. People. You're also playing Urza and Eldrazi, so that's yeah. another reason. Yeah, uh, uh, yeah, Urza is relatively a card that people hate. But anyway, it um, goes infinite combo with yeah, everything. Yeah, it, it's it's CDH. Uh, Bedevil is two and a black, uh, two, two, two black, black and a red, red, sorry. For an instant. Uh, destroy target artifact, creature, or planeswalker. Yeah, um, it's, it's great card. It's great really value. Good, yeah. It is three mana, yeah, no, um, they don't get anything out of it, and it can hit 
but most two, like, threats. Yeah, most. There's of the not big usually threats. many enchantments. Like there are threats. Enchantments come like up. Like doubling but... season, but yeah, it's not really a threat. It just aids other things. And in the end, if some if doubling season is making stuff too powerful, like often you'll see doubling season with planeswalkers and creatures. Well, then the devil can hit those two yeah. kind of types anyway. So yeah. it's great. Um, uh, path. Path to Exile. No, it's just generally a great card. Exile target creature, it's controlling me. Search its library for a basic land. Put that card into the battle for the Tatlin Shuffles. Yeah. So it's just. It's one white mana for a d- exiling a creature. Like, it's really good. It's good. It's played in Commander a lot. So. Yeah, I've seen it. I see it in a lot of decks. I run it in most of my decks. It's. It does ramp them, but. You know, like small press. Let, yeah, yeah. exiling a creature. Any creature for one white mana is often really good. You got um, another thing that can hit two permanent types. Uh, ruinous path, one and two black for a sorcery, unfortunately, but uh, it destroys target creature or planeswalker, which is you know relatively. It's two permanent types, which planeswalkers don't come up too often, Commander. Yeah, it's mainly in. Uh, super friends, and even then, they're gonna have too many planeswalkers to deal with anyway. But it's it's nice to have. I I hate reversing stuff like Narset, Part of Veil, <laughs> only drawing one card per turn. Like just to get this out here. Puzzle box, no yeah. yeah. Exactly. So it's good to be able to hit planeswalkers sometimes, and then destroying creatures are obviously just useful. But it has Awaken four, so you can cast it for seven mana instead, which often not Five great. Too black. Five or two black, yeah, but you also get a four-four elemental. Well, just, one of your lands becomes a four-four. Yeah. It's um, with, with haste, so it it's, doesn't. That's to be useful yeah, as it's well. more useful uh, in the later game when you want to get rid of something and you've got too much mana. Do, so you just, just got sink so much in much. some yeah. mana. You sink your it. mana into this and just you get something more out of it, which is always nice having an extra creature on the board. Uh, mm-hmm. Another one similar to um, Path. Uh, Swords to plush, yes. just yeah. Ex- It's same amount of costs, instant. Exile target creature, it's control against life equal to its power. Yeah. So, yeah. It's just a great card. Yeah. Um, Some We man. got Sword of Sinew and Steel. Yeah, well, sorry, moving on from remove. Uh, well, this is kind of a removal card. We yeah. got it listed um, it's between in both. Voltron. Yeah, we got it listed in removal and Voltron just to kind of... Um, because we were unsure as to whether we should really put it in either. Yeah, yeah plus two, plus two, protection from black and red. Uh, I see both of those colours quite a lot. Yeah, no, tables. those are the... Black specifically is the one that removes a lot of yeah. stuff. So being able to uh, protect your creatures from that is useful. And then um, being able to use it to make equip creature deal whenever it deals combat damage to a player, which when you have protection, they can't block, so often happens. Uh, destroy up to one target planeswalker and up to one target artifact. So, it, it, sadly, it's not a creature. It's still very good, though. Um, pro black, red, blah, blah, blah. Um, yeah. Yeah, so you can just get rid of planeswalkers. Yeah. Artifacts sometimes do come up as being something you need to get rid of. Yeah, like, and I think it is useful being able to get maybe their soul ring, put them back behind two mana. Yeah. Just relatively useful card. Now, this one here, Sword and Truth and Justice, is really good combined with our Commander Lamos. So it's a three mana artifact. It's another one of the swords, which unfortunately are all relatively expensive, but they're crazy good. Yeah. So it has protection from white and blue, plus two, plus two, and whenever it deals combat damage to a player, you put a plus one, plus one counter on it, which is relevant for Ramos, because he uses the plus one, plus one counters. And then and then you proliferate. So if you've got other stuff with plus one, plus one counters, it's even better, because yeah. you just... Yeah, yeah, so, and then it's equipped to just like all the other swords. So you're basically able to put uh, two counters on it with Ramos every time he deals combat damage to a player, and that just makes it bigger, and then you swing again, it makes him even bigger, and, and, but yeah. sooner or later they're dead by combat uh, commander damage, so yeah, that's good. Yeah. Um, it's just great. Yeah, it's great. Uh, we've got seven cards that are like our big threats that really finish the game off. So, um, a classic one, Crater of Behemoth. Uh, it's it's a 5-5 five, five for 5 and 3 green, which may not seem like great that great, but it's got haste. And when it enters the battlefield, creatures you control gain trample and get plus X plus X, where X is the number of creatures you, you control. You yeah. control, yeah. It's, cra- it's ridiculous. It's really, really good. Um, then you've yeah. got Finale of Devastation. Which combines pretty well with that. You go, you pay... 
So it's X and two green yeah. for a sorcery. Search your library or graveyard. That, that might be useful. I mean, it's usually yeah. a library. For a creature card with converted mana cost X or less and put it onto the battlefield. If you search your library this way, shuffle it. If X is 10 or more, creatures you control get plus X plus X and gain haste until end of turn. So basically it just buffs all your creatures massively, they get really big, yeah. and they gain haste. If you, you if you go if you go pay ten for X and search for Cradle of Behemoth, then all your creatures get the buff from Cradle of Behemoth. Yeah. And the buff from Finale of Devastation, yeah. where you just swing in for a load of damage, everything gains they don't gain trample, sadly. Oh, but they do if you get Crater Hoof. Crater Hoof gives them all trample. Oh, and yes. then Finale of Devastation gives them all haste. So now you just swing with your whole army um, group and, and hopefully some of them are quite enough big. Yeah, and, they're, they're all, and everyone's yeah. gone. But especially if they're already getting plus 10, plus 10. And if you've got like seven, uh, even five creatures, it's a plus 15, plus 15. It's usually enough to wipe out Most everyone. Most yeah. Then we got another one from the same cycle, actually, as Finale of Devastation, is Finale of Glory. Yeah, this this one was the best finale, people say. Yeah. It, um, it's very good. Um, so it's X and two white. Create X, two, two white soldier creature tokens plus vigilance. If X is ten or more, also create X, four, four white angel creature tokens with flying and vigilance. So it makes, if you've got ten or more, it creates Sarah angels as well. Yeah, and just having if you if you admittedly most people are just gonna go for the ten, um, already that's uh, what sixty power on the board from yeah. twelve mana, which is yeah. why it's very Ten good. tends to be relatively powerful, and just the more money you pump into it, the bigger your army goes, and it can just be crazy. Um, then we got the Parhelion two, which we talked about earlier. Is a one six. vehicle. <laughs> yeah, it's our only vehicle, so SRAM, draw a card. Um, but six and two white for a five-five legendary artifact vehicle. If you don't know how vehicles work, um, they're actually just artifacts on their own until you crew them, which uh, crew you know, on this you case tap. is four. Yeah. So you, you have to tap any number of creatures, creatures you control to get power four. Pa- well, crew four would be power four or greater. Um, crew one is one power or greater which most creatures have yeah so <laughs> generally really relatively easy to hit and um then but this one crew four so quite a light amount but but the thing considering is, the fact that it's a five five flyer first strike vigilance when it attacks it creates two sarah angel basically yeah um and then you can use the angels to crew it and you've yeah, it just creates extra. It constantly is creating ton- a massive army for you, really, really quickly, really, yeah. really effectively. Um, uh, another one we talked about earlier, Progenitus. Just this one doesn't usually see play in Commander much. Like well, more no. in jank decks. Yeah, I, I than well, you you have a Progenitus yeah, deck, don't mine's you? Mine's more jank than actually powerful. Yeah, but yeah, it's a fun card. Um, it doesn't seem much by in the 99, I don't think, but yeah. in this deck, with Ramos being able to generate so much mana, it is it's, really it's good. It's useful in the 99. Yeah. So, mm. it's, um, just in case you didn't know, um, it's white, white, blue, blue, black, black, red, red, green, green, for a 10-10 with protection from everything, and if it would be put into a graveyard from anywhere, reveal it and shuffle it into its owner's library instead. So, it's, yeah, it's ma- it's a massive beta that... Or basically can't die except to board wipes. Um, yeah. Unfortunately, board wipes are quite common in our format. But yeah. by the time you get this out, maybe you got it through a finale of devastation. So you'd have to pay 10 for that. Now, now it's a 2020 with haste and protection from everything. Yeah. That's later in the game. That could probably kill someone. Yeah. Especially if you're swinging with Ramos, who maybe is a bit bigger as well. Maybe he's a 10-10 or something. <laughs> yeah. Uh Next one. Another card that a lot of people hate. Hate. For a good reason. It's Vorinplex, Vorinplex, Voice Voice of of Hunger. So this one's, um, it's a Praetor, which is a cycle of um, cards from... Monocolored cards. Yeah, monocolored from the... What's Uh, the set? It's in fact New Phyrexia. So um, they're usually pretty big, pretty powerful. So Vorinplex specifically is six green and a green for a seven, six trample. Um, it doubles your mana. So, so whenever you tap a land, land for mana, mana, add one mana to your mana pool of any type that land produces. So 
basically it could turn all your shocks into like uh, uh, the bounces. Yeah, the bounce lines. So it could either double the basics, but it, then it can also double the jewels. So the jewel yeah. usually taps for white or blue, but no, it taps for, for white and blue, and blue yeah. or double white and double blue. So you you get a lot of value out of that, but that's not all. This <laughs> the Praetor cycle always uh, all the cards have a a bonus for you and a uh, detriment to your opponents. So this one is whenever an opponent taps a land for mana, that land doesn't untap during its control's next untap step, which is just brutal. Like, yeah. So it, 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 if someone's tapping out to do like a finale or like what um, Sun Zeniths. Um, you can just, if they tap out, then they basically don't have another turn, except yeah, for... they're missing out their, on their next turn, ramp. They're Any, anything that's ramped them, except for, like, land ramp. Yeah. So they're just going to be missing out on a massive amount of mana each turn. Yes, in Commander, we do see a lot of artifact-based mana, um, and non-land-based mana, which yeah. definitely does, uh, mean that they still can get stuff out of it. But just lands play such a big part yeah, in no. most decks that it can just shut people down so yeah. hard. All decks. Plus, it, it's a 7 6 with Trample. <laughs> which is still pretty good value. That's a big beater. Um, so. And then our last threat is Zakama, Primal Calamity. So, so this one sees actually. It's, yeah. it's quite a good commander. Yeah, no, actually. it's used in a lot of commander decks. Like, it's quite recent from our uh, Rivals of Ixalan. Uh, so it's 6 and Anaya. For so a nine red, nine. green, blue, red, red, green, white. white. Uh, oh, for a nine nine with vigilance, reach, and trample. Uh, when it enters the battlefield, if you cast it, untap all your lands. Yep. Um, and then two uh, and a red Zakama deals three, three damage, damage to target, to target creature. creature. Two and a green destroy target artifact or enchantment. And two and a white you gain three life. So it's a, it's a great mana sink, which yeah. combined with Ramos is really good because you can just uh, sink a ton of mana into it and get a ton of value. You can rem- you can deal quite a lot of damage to creatures. You know, you could remove most of your opponent's board probably. Yeah, you know. Three um, damage to the target creature with Ramos, you remove it, and that's yeah. what? Six damage to something and either destroy an artifact or enchantment or gain three life yeah. already. So, so gaining three life, eh, not really the best. No but one really. Destroying artifact money. or enchantments is just really good in our format. It's yeah, because there's so much artifact stuff. Not so much enchantments. There is some enchantment play, but it's yeah. usually stuff like doubling season, which is support mainly. Yeah, but and you still want to take those out sometimes. They can just get out of hand very quickly, especially with token decks. Yeah, and then. The, I mean, he's a 9-9 nine, nine Vigilance, Reach, and Trample. Um, and Already, that's good for 9 mana. Yeah, and then and with the, what um, what is called Untap- the free mechanic, yeah. uh, basically meaning that he untaps land equal to the amount of mana you have to spend to cast him. So I mean, more than free. So, it's, yeah. You, if you just tap free. out, if you just tap out and then play it and untap all those lands, you've got some mana floating in your mana pool. Yeah, if you've got any lands that are tapping for extra. So maybe you've yeah. got Varn Clex out. All your lands are tapping for double. You tap all nine of your lands, lands anyway. And you get nine mana. Also. And you get nine. And no, you, you get and you get the nine mana. Spend it to cast Zakama, and, and then, then you've you got nine mana your in your mana pool. So Plus it's just a free nine mana. mana. Yeah. Yeah. It's it's really good. Um, mm, we've gone through those. Yeah. So what are we? Uh, oh no. We, um, we have? No, we have Yeah. Well, oh, okay. We haven't gone through. Yeah. We've just got brainstorm in there. So this is our card advantage. We talked a little bit about it, but we've got brainstorm. Yeah, you know, one blue. Draw two, draw three cards, then put two cards from your hand on top of your library in any order. Yeah. Finale and revelation. One another card from the finale cycle. Uh, so it's X and two blue. Draw X cards, and then just like all the other ones, if X is ten or more, you get an additional effect, which in this case is instead shuffle your graveyard into your library, then draw the X cards again. Uh, draw the X cards and untap up to five lands. And then you've got no max hand size for the rest of the game. Yeah, so no max hand size for the rest of the game is kind of really good. It does exile itself, so um, but that's not too much of a problem because we're not a deck that's running too much recursion. Uh, we talked about Growth Spiral, uh, Niv Miss It Reborn. We've talked about that. No, we talked about him. Return of the Wild Speaker, a new one from Eldrain. Um, so it's four and a green for an instant. Choose one. Uh, draw cards equal to the greatest power of among non-human creatures you control. So it, this card... That doesn't matter, because... It's it's pretty good, because yeah. 
Ramos can grow really big really quickly. Yeah. Uh, this one actually will buff Ramos by uh, one counter. Yeah. So when you, you cast it, it, so you draw yeah. basically one more card, and you target Ramos. Maybe he's got three or four counters on him. That makes him a seven or seven seven. Maybe even an eight eight. Drawing eight cards for five mana is it's really good, good value. Yeah. And then another, and then this card is great because you can choose the other option, which is all non-human creatures you control get plus three, plus three until end of turn. And keep in mind, this is instant speed, so you can cast it on the opponent's end step and not need to discard. Yeah. So for all that fresh hand for next turn. Yeah. Or it's you can just... cast it once you've declared all their attackers and they've declared blockers, and then and you can just wipe them out. Everything. Yeah. And um, seeing as we're running um, very few, uh, in fact, almost no humans in the whole deck. Yeah, so you've got Amanda. SRAM and that's about Sram, it. No, Sram, no, Sram, Sram's a dwarf. Sram. Oh, Sram's, Sram's a dwarf. Oh. Yeah. No humans. Uh, yes. Really? In fact, we are running no humans except for the few humans that come from Finale of Glory. Glory. Yeah. Which is unfortunate. No, no, no. Are they even humans? Uh... They soldiers, they're soldiers. just soldiers, they're not even humans. Oh wow, okay. So they get buffed as well. So uh, this card in our deck is extremely powerful. We have absolutely no humans at whatever, whatsoever. It's extremely powerful. Um, so we've also run a... Ristic Study. Ristic Study, another a classic classic commander uh-huh. card. Unfortunately, it is quite expensive, but it's, it's only $20. Yeah. I thought it would be more. Two and a blue. Whenever your opponent plays a spell, you may draw a card unless that player pays one. One? Um, I thought it was two. Oh, uh, no. Oh, so, okay. anyway. Pe- it's one. People will often pay the one, but sometimes it's so taxing and they're playing quite a few spells, they just can't yeah. pay it. Or you if can... they're doing an X spell again, they're probably not going to pay the extra yeah, one. Yeah, because they want... Unless they've got something else to do in the turn. Yeah, other so... Than tap out for something big. Yeah, so people tend to... Um, they tend to pay for it, but if they can't, you can often be drawing two, three. I've seen, I've drawn four cards in one rotation off this yeah. card before. It's just a great card yeah, to have. Uh, Rish Card's expertise is four and two green. It does something similar to Return of the Wild Speaker. Draw cards equal to the greatest power among creatures you control. So, yeah. once again, same effect. But you also. Non- it's not got that non human downside, which we yeah. don't really care about. And then you may cast a card with converted mana cost five or less from your hand without paying its mana cost. Which generally, there's not really much that you don't. Yeah, we can we can cast a lot of cards from our deck yeah. with that. And it's just great. Just got like even the tracks are there. Yeah, so. Camera. Yeah, so now we've got um, Soul Diviner. We've talked, We've about, talked that. about so just tap to remove uh, counter from your artifact creatures, lands, or and you draw a card. Just yeah, really um, nice. And then Zamp Guild Mage, the one we haven't talked about. So it's a Simic for um, a 2 2. Um, yeah. Um, it a Simic for this turn, each creature you control enters the battlefield with an additional plus one, plus one counter on it, and then an, another ability, Simic, to remove a, ca- uh, a counter from a creature you control and draw a card. Yeah, so, so the good thing about this, unlike the Soul Diviner, it's a repeatable effect, but you do have to pay mana to be able to use it. Yeah. Uh, then we got what we call our support cards. So these cards just kind of generally are able to help buff the deck a bit and really make sure that uh, what we're doing is happening Has, effectively. And yeah, no. Does something. Yeah. <laughs> so we've got Attracts a Praetor's Voice. Which generally doesn't see play out in the 99. Yeah. But just for our deck... Like, it just does the thing we want. We want to proliferate everything. We so, want to get Ramos up yeah. so we can get it's that also, mana. It's also a 4 4 Flying Vigilance Death Touch Lifelink. And you can also, because it's all coloured mana, um, and it gets only four one counters of onto Ramos. Yeah, so it's great. It's massive, massive yeah. buffer. Uh, we've got Biogenic Upgrade. Yeah, so four we, and two green. We thought up a com- combo with this. So it's four and two green for a sorcery. Distribute three plus one plus one counters among one, two, or three target creatures, then double the number of plus one plus one counters on each of those creatures. So this is generally a really good card, but combined with another card in our deck, which we've talked about quite a bit, uh, doubling, doubling season. season. Uh, so that, uh, if an effect we create one or more co- tokens under your control, creates twice that many tokens. If an effect we put one or more counters on a permanent you control, puts twice that many counters on that permanent instead. So, so biogenic upgrade. If you target Ramos, it's so, going to put Ramos immediately gets a counter because that's green. So that's one counter on Ramos. Then you put three counters on it, 
So um, now got four. Dude, but four counters. All those effects are doubled by but doubling season. So, so the first one gets an additional two. one. So that's two. Then the um, three counters from that puts six. So you've already got eight counters on there. Yep. Then uh, biogenic upgrade says double the number of counters on this creature. So you double it to sixteen, and because that adds eight, it act, um, that's putting eight counters on it. So then, doubling season decides. Actually, no, you're going to put 16 counters on it. Yeah. So now you've just got a plus. You got 24 plus one plus one counters on Ramos for six mana. For six mana, which it's, um, yes, you do have the investment earlier of five mana for doubling season, which usually pays itself off very quickly. pretty quickly in this yeah. deck. Yeah, and because you're removing five counters um, from Ramos, that means with 24 counters, that you're very much able to get. Um, nearly, four. nearly fifty mana. Yeah, very close to fifty mana. And if you cast any spells with that mana, you are getting fifty mana. Yeah, at least. So it's a really great way to get lots of counters on it. Unless you get you're casting like Soul Ring with that mana, which usually yeah. won't be done because it'll play be played turn one, or if you top deck it, turn two or three. Yeah. I mean. Uh, then we've got Boros Charm. It's uh, one of the best charms. It's a really good charm. Red and white for choose one instant. Um, choose one. Deals four damage to target player or planeswalker. So, you know, maybe finish someone off with it if they are on low life. Or you can just take out a planeswalker if you need to. That's not the part we're worried about. We're worried about the permanence you control gain indestructible at until end of turn five. So, it's also got another one target creature against Double Strike until end of turn. That might be useful with Ramos, just, you know, just getting need... that extra damage to kill someone. Yeah. Um, but the indestructible part. If that's... someone board wipes and you maybe you got your Progenitus out, you've got a couple of cards you really don't want to lose, maybe like uh, Finale of Devon. Oh, maybe, sorry, Not no. Finale. Maybe you've just Shram. cast your. You, just... you got Shrams, you got maybe you got uh, Rishka out. Yeah. You got you've maybe. You just got... played your Finale of Glory. And they're board wiping because next time you wipe everyone out. So you got to So you're like, oh, I don't want that to happen. So you give all your permanents indestructible, and now their board wipe kills all of their stuff, all of your opponent's stuff, and it doesn't kill your stuff. It just helps you a bunch. Yeah, like, it's a really great card. Um, doubling season we yep. talked about. <laughs> it's insane in this deck. It's insane in any deck with tokens or counters, and we've got a bit of both. Um, so this is uh, a dual card type thing. So give take. So um, the give side of it is two and a green for a sorcery. Put three plus one plus one pounds on target creature. And then the take side is two and a blue. Remove all plus one plus one counters from target creature control. Draw that many cards. And then it also also got fuse. Yeah. So fuse says you can you can cast both of the cards if you want to. Yeah. Um. So really really great card. Uh. You can put three counters on Ramos maybe. Really nice. And then, uh, and you've and then also you've got. got uh, it puts two counters on Ramos as well. Is that how fuse works? Would you only? If you oh cast, well, no, because you're casting both. Then you'd get at least one well. counter on Ramos. Uh, yeah. If you yeah, count, if you play one, you only get one. But you if you're the other, casting both of them, then you get two two counters on yeah. Ramos. Yeah. So that could be far up to five counters on Ramos, which is nice. And then take also allowing you to remove all the counters from Ramos. Really, really good. And yeah. um, yeah. I I mean being able to. Uh, remove all the counters from Ramos. Unfortunately, a bit of a downside. You yeah. don't have the counters anymore. But, but drawing... it turns that into a whole bunch of cards. So if you've already done the doubling season thing yeah. in the Bob, you've maybe got like 10, even close to 15 counters on Ramos. And so then he's a massive beast. It just adds what? You could swing with five him in counters. Combat. Yeah. Yeah, five counters. Um, so that takes it up to 15, 20, and then you draw that many cards and it loses all the counters. Yeah, so now he's just a mass. He's a small 4 4, but you just drew maybe 15 cards. So I think from there. It's pretty worth it. Yeah. You, we're running Kenrith the Return King. A new um, one from Eldraine as well. It was the Buy Box promo. Uh, so it's four and a white for a legendary creature, Human Noble, uh, five five, um, and it's got an ability for each um, color, which is really pretty nice. cool. Um, so it's got a red. All creatures gain trample and haste until end of turn. One and a green. Put a plus one plus one counter on target creature. Two and a white. Target player gains five life. Three and a blue. Yep. yep. Uh, target player draws a card. Four and a black. Put target creature card from a graveyard onto the battlefield under its owner's control. So this is a really, really good card. It's um, it 
it does it's a mana sink as well like sakama is sakama as well. as well this one is cheaper than sakama as well and the effects are definitely better it's able to put counters onto your onto ramos uh for only two mana which is really really good and then all your creatures gaining trample and haste is really good when you're just trying to finish everyone off with your big threats um and then you've also been able to gain five life. Uh, it's quite good in a tough, sticky situation where you're yeah. maybe on low life. If you sink in like maybe nine mana into it, it just gets your life total up to a healthy amount just to yeah. weather the storm. And then you've got uh, three and blue to draw cards. I mean, drawing cards always nice. Yeah, gotta love it. And then it's, it might not be the best value, but it's repeatable. That's yeah. why it's a bit more mana for one card. Yeah, and then four and a black. Uh, it's maybe someone. So most people don't notice this, but it's put target creature from a graveyard onto the battlefield under its owner's control. So you could get political. Like if someone has a huge threat, and you see someone has something in their graveyard that could like deal with the threat. Yeah, so you can just make a deal like, hey, I'll revive this card for me as long as you get rid of that huge threat of le- there. Like, yeah. It's just, like, it's... It, it gets back your own stuff for sure, but it can be such a great, like, political card in that sense that you can just look at everyone's graveyard, give it to them, and make them deal with it instead of you. Yeah, and that sh- saves you on mana. It's just generally great. Yeah. And then... Um, uh, we've got Land Tax. Land which Tax. is always a great card. For It's one white for an enchantment. At the beginning of your upkeep, if, we can, if okay. an opponent controls more lands than you, you may search your library for up to three basics, reveal them and put them in, in your hand. Yep, and then uh, shuffle your library. <coughs> so, uh, Land Tax is great when maybe you just really want to hit your land drops. And we've got a decent amount of basics in the deck. So once you, after a couple of activations of land tax, it can, um, in total, if we add up all the basics, we've got 15 basics in the deck. So that's removing 15 cards out of it after uh, five activations as well. So you might not always get five activations off it, but if you do, then suddenly you that's 15 cards that you probably discarded maybe or kept in your hand, and they're just sitting on the battlefield maybe a little bit. But, you know, Again, most... Again, with Kenrith, you could even potentially, like cheat into play like a Vorinclex or a Zakama. Yeah. Admittedly Zakama wouldn't get the enter the battlefield effect of untapping all the lands because it's if you cast it, so yeah. you wouldn't get to get Yeah, that. so you can fill up your hand, discard stuff, maybe you see you've got Kemris in hand and you go, Yep, I'm gonna play him and then I'm gonna cheat into play all my massive threats yeah, which Vorinclex, usually cost way more mana. Helion, yeah, it's really great. Hook for um we got uh Rings of Bright Half just a great card for <laughs> activated abilities. Whenever um, you play an activated ability, if it isn't a mana ability, you may pay two and copy it. Yeah. Um, so it's you a may three choose mana new artifacts. targets for the copy. Yeah. So this three mana artifact. It's just such great value. It, it. Yeah. It's quite expensive at like fifth, like forty five dollars. About a, for each. Yeah. For one. Unfortunately, it's quite an expensive card. A lot of these cards in the deck are expensive. It's, yeah. There's it not, is unfortunate. It, it doesn't. It adds up. Like there's a lot of, like, land taxes and another twenty dollars. Doubling season is another fifty. And then, uh, yeah, attractor the is about uh, thirty dollars, I believe. Yeah, that um, all around expensive cards. Um, so unfortunately, it is hard to put this. Probably quite hard to put this deck together. But it's a fun. It's really fun. Yeah, it's a fun deck. It's definitely not a CEDH. At yeah, one point, we added two cards. So it's probably seven. Like it's sixty percent casual, forty percent committed. Yeah. But at one point, we had like maybe twenty cards in the deck, and we looked down on the stats, and um, it was like this is thirty percent using, uh, using tapped out deck builder. Um, you should go use it. It's a great uh, site. Um, it said it was about 30% competitive and ni- uh, 70% com- uh, casual. We added two cards to the deck and it bumped the competitive rating up to 77%. What were the two cards? Um, it was, um... Uh, I can't remember. It was, oh, it was Give Take and it was Biogenic Upgrade. Oh, yeah. 
I don't understand why that They're was quite the, cheap, but I think yeah. it's because the tapped out that these cards are probably run because that tapped out has a lot very large database. So it's able to see lots of um stuff. Yeah. Yeah, they're probably run in a lot of Ramos decks. And that so are they're able yeah. So they're just like, oh you're going for a Ramos competitive deck, that's gonna be a bit more competitive. Yeah. Yeah, oh, it's been oh, bumped oh. down to 60-40, 60 being casual, 40 competitive. Yeah, and now we put uh, finish off the deck. But uh, I personally don't find Tout Tout's competitive meter. Like you said, it was very uh, volatile. It suddenly went up, suddenly goes down. Uh, it's not the best rating for your decks. I think realistically you're be- much better off playing with them, you know, playing, you play testing them online. Tout Tout has a great play tester. Um, and doing that before you try and do it anything with them yeah you can it tells you the uh price range ish thing um, it's on a few different websites yeah uh card kingdom very popular uh card buying site uh, i um, use it quite we got we use it quite a lot yeah. um anyway continuing on uh support we've got rich car pima renegade uh it's a great card it can make ramos be able to tap for mana yeah because it says when he enters the battlefield Put a plus one plus one counter on each of up to two target creatures. So already you're getting three mana dorks from this. Um, yeah. And each creature you control with a counter on it has tap and green to your mana pool. Yeah. So if someone's playing like Infect, even you could just anything. It's any counter. So even if you've got minus one minus one counters on your creatures, yeah. And you don't want to send them into like scary situations because they're tiny. They're now mana dorks. Yeah, it's actually really nice. Um, and then. Sword the, of Feast and Famine. The best sword, um, subjectively. Not but, the most expensive, mind you. The most expensive is uh, Fire and Ice, I believe. Yeah, yeah. at $90. Yeah, piece. about. Um, so, Sword of Feast and Famine is about $58, $60. Um, so, it's the same as the swords. It's a three-drop artifact equipment, equips for two. A crypt creature gets plus two, plus two, and has pro black green. Um, whenever a crypt creature deals combat damage to a player, that player discards a card and you tap all lands you control. You are, yes, you untap all your lands, which, I mean, I can, I, I put it in my decks and I kind of think of it as like a half ramp piece because it is a lot of mana, but if you have one creature down and black and black and green are probably the most popular colors in Commander. Aside from blue, blue's, blue's also very popular. Blue well. doesn't play many creatures though. Blue's the most popular color, but it doesn't play many creatures. Well, I disagree. I think green really? is more popular. Yeah. Mm. yeah. No, yeah. no, I reckon blue is because it's played more, but it's not the main color focused of the deck. Like it has a lot of a lot of utility, a lot of card draw that's necessary for the deck to work. Yeah, I also think green does, and green has all, like more ramp than any other deck. Yeah, no. Well. So I do but think green. Then is again, there's more. all the um, people could play Orzov or yeah, any of that. Why would you play Orzov? <laughs> I mean, it could be you could be like yeah. Anyway, um, so yeah. but you get protection from two very popular colors, so often you'll be able to get a swing in. Discarding, they get they discard a card. It's uh, sure puts them behind a little bit on cards, but not super popular. But all you're caring about is it the is untapping pro black lands. green and untapping the lands. Yeah. Um. So then we've got the tutors. There's just the basic ones. Demonic, Demonic tutor, tutor Eldamari's call, call, enlightened, enlightened tutor, tutor, mystical tutor, tutor, and worldly tutor. Yeah. So the um enlightened, mystical, and worldly all cost one of their color. So um. Mystical is blue, Enlightened's white, and Worldly's green. Um, worldly tutors, uh, they all are at instant speed. They all tutor and put it on the top of the library. Um, they can so, only also hit certain card yeah, types. So, so Worldly tutors for creatures, Mystical tutors for instants and sorceries, and Enlightened tutors for artifacts and enchantments. Yep. So between that, you've basically set, you're basically set for all the card types that you really need to tutor for. Yep. Um, along with Eldamari, El- El- Eldamari's call, call as I've searches realized. for uh, a creature, creature for a Selesnia at instant speed, and it puts it in your hand. Um, um, and then demonic um, one in a black. Probably. Search your library for a card and put it in your hand. Then shuffle this your is, library. This is probably one of the best. The, the best tutor in the game. Yeah, no. Like it's there's no downside. It's just two mana. Get a card from your library into your hand. It's really good. And then we have uh, Icicle Scepter in the deck. In, in the category Abuse. 
We, this, we, this, this conceptor yeah. is generally used to make infinite mana with like stuff like um, artifacts and dramatic reversals. Yeah, the, dramatic the, reversals. The combo. So you um, and so you usually use dramatic reversal imprinted onto Isochron, um, and then get a mana reducer so that it costs. Oh, not even. You just get oh, yeah. any mana rocks that can, in combination, that tap for three mana or more, and then you pay two mana to tap the Isochron. And then you untap Casting everything. Casting Dramatic Reversal. Dramatic Reversal untaps, untaps everything. all non-land permanents you control. So then you untap your Ice Conceptor, plus and then all the other all the three artifacts. I think you get it from there, and you just gradually get more mana, and it builds infinite, and... Yeah. So, but but what we're using in this deck is infinite tutors or infinite like stuff um, like assassins trophy beast within. Um, uh, I can't hit beast within. It's too much mana. Oh yeah. Wait, how much is it? Two convert a mana cost two, two or, or less. less. So, so sword supply shares, shares path to exile. Wow. Um, it if basically seek even you can just brainstorm as well. Yeah, tons of you can imprint and card draw spells. You can imprint. Um, tutors, removal. It's just a card that generally can be um, useful in it, yeah, a lot of situations. Yeah. Oh, it, we put it in a category abuse, but it's because it's a card that a lot of people will see and kind of go, "Oh no, he's making infinite mana." Yeah, he's but then win they the game see on the spot. But, yeah, and, and then just, they see you making infinite tutors, and they're like, "Oh, oh, oh. it's just a jank use of it." So, yeah, yeah. It's, it's not really jank. It's, it's just not the best use of it. It's not the use that everyone would use it for. Yeah. Um, so generally that's the deck we're running. Uh, uh, just All the going. shocks, um, Ancient Tomb, all the checks. Uh, so the, the shocks um, are tapped for uh, two colours and they enter tapped unless you pay two life. So they shock you when they enter untapped. The card shock that deals two damage to any target. Yep, so then there's mana confluence, which is just pay one life, add mana of any colour. We've got um, the best land in commander, um, command tower, just un- no downside, it just taps, taps for, for add one mana mm-hmm. of any colour to your co- uh, commander's colour identity. So it's, yeah, it's yeah. all around a good card. Ancient, Ancient tomb, tomb, technically a ramp. Uh, because it, it taps, taps for two and it deals three damage to you. Two damage. Two damage. Oh, yeah, it's even yeah. better. Yeah, it's generally a great card. Um, so yeah, that's the deck. Yeah. It's it's a really fun deck. I've played quite a lot with it. it link it does... in the description, I guess. Yeah, yeah no, it's... link in the description. Yeah, it's generally a fun deck. Uh, we're gonna work on it some more, but for now, it's yeah, it's really good. I mean, we might not work on it, but we might. Uh, who knows? Yeah. If if this if this video gets a lot of support, then yes, we, we might. We'll see if we'll do a remake of it with uh, some better stuff, better cards. Yeah, we'll we'll yeah. do our best to make it as powerful as we can. Um. Yeah. But is that the end of the video? Yeah. Okay. Well, okay. So um, yeah, be sure to like and subscribe. I guess if you enjoyed. Yeah. Thanks for watching. Like and subscribe if you enjoyed, and you'd like to see more of our content. See you next time. Bye.